Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Way of Grace series. Um, if it's your first time, I recommend that you go back to the first two videos. And if you're returning here again, it's so beautiful to have you and have you receive this space. And I always invite you to arrive here with an open heart and a curious mind. And today we're going to really look at who is God really. And I'm going to share with you my own reflections and insights that I've received around God's heart and character through being in relationship with God. Again, different from religion, and I'll go deeper into that through this conversation, but I just wanted to open this and share my experience of really how I've gotten to know God and really the God that has been revealed to me. So I want to first start by just like looking at who God is as we look at God from, you know, the lens of the world. And many of you I know maybe came from religion or the church and perhaps experienced trauma or hurt in those different sectors. And I feel many of us, you know, whether we were religious or not, hold a similar image or idea about God because it has been so subconsciously programmed into us to ultimately fear God. And I always say, you know, I feel our concept and relationship with God on earth will drastically change when God stops being something that we fear and God starts becoming something that we feel, right? And that we really remember the spirit of the living God that beats within our own hearts. So, so many of us hold this, this context of God, you know, as this like white haired bearded man up in the sky, you know, maybe casting judgment and, and condemning down on, on the people. And perhaps too feeling that you have to check off the right boxes and, you know, be repenting, you know, all of your, your sins and your wrongs, um, to have your place in heaven. And to me, a lot of religion is very transactional. So it's like, again, okay, let me like do all these things to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm being good enough to receive God's love. Right. And, and even this transactional, um, energy is, is very tied into new age spirituality as well, you know, in the law of attraction and manifestation and, and all of those things. I always say religion and the new age is like two ends on the same spectrum, two sides of the same coin. And I might go deeper into that today, or I might not, but just, you know, that might spark something in you as I say that. And I feel again, you know, many of us have been very conditioned to essentially fear God or feel that God is so far outside of us and above us. And again, it's just casting down this like law and, and legalism. And, um, and ultimately that has caused us to really spiral as a humanity into a lot of shame, into a lot of guilt, you know, all things that God was trying to withhold from us from the beginning of time. You know, God never wanted us to be living in this, this realm of sin and shame and guilt and blame and all of these things that we see are so prevalent on earth today. And what I have really found through my relationship with God is, you know, God is not this like, fear provoking rule making tyrant up in the sky but god is really a god who desires and yearns to be close to your heart and the god that i know bends down to meet you in your darkest moments and is ready and willing and desires to hold you you know no matter who you are where you've been what you've done you know the message i've constantly heard from god is i'm with you i've never left you i'm with you i've never left you right and in any moment we get to choose to really soften into that beautiful embrace of God. And for me in my journey, I really have gotten to know God's heart through understanding Christ's character. And I'll go deeper into that in a moment. So again, context of the world, seeing God is this like tyrant up in the sky. Who's just like laying down the law and, you know, cracking the whip and you got to check off all your boxes to make sure you, you have a seat in heaven or else, you know, you're going to hell and I'll do a different 
conversation on heaven and hell, you know, I ultimately don't believe in hell and I'll share more why, but that will be a conversation for another day. And then I wanted to just touch on, you know, kind of then new age spirituality, how God is often seen as more of this, like very, um, abstract or, um, impersonal, you know, universal energy. That's just like out there where to me, that ultimately didn't feel true. And it felt very, um, just like this, this concept that I, I couldn't grasp. And again, I've come to know God as this deeply relational and personal being, um, who, who I'm very close to in the universe was like something that I couldn't essentially like rest into or hold onto. It felt like just like a lot of potential, like the potential of, of this relationship or this essence, but not really ever understanding or knowing like what this essence is, what their heart is like, what their character is like, because it's like, it was just too floaty, too, too big, too abstract for my heart and my mind to really understand that and be in relationship with that. And, you know, on the other side of that religion is kind of often can be like an abusive relationship, right? That's very manipulative and unfortunately very tarnished, you know, through the indoctrination that has happened through the church. And ultimately, I don't know if you can hear the huge truck that's going by, but again, these are just unfiltered conversations, you know, ultimately, the greatest enemy to God is, is the church. And, you know, the church has been constructed, not all church, not all religion, but the bigger scheme of this has been constructed in a way to really separate us from God and to separate us from knowing God and being in relationship with God and feeling that we need to be bound to the law and to legalism. And again, all of these, you know, conditions that the church has set up to ultimately have us feel that our power is, is outside of us and that God is like looking down on us. And again, continuing to breed that cycle of shame and guilt and blame in our bodies. And, you know, to me, that's like the furthest thing from the truth and who God is and who God wants us to be and the image of, of who we are in, in God. So, so it's a lot to look at. And even when I say the word God, you know, that might activate something in you that might trigger something in you. And I just, you know, invite you to really look at, you know, where do I feel the essence of God in my body? When I bring that word into, you know, my field, where does it land? What sensations are attached to the word God? What stories are attached to this energy and just allowing yourself to, to witness that without judgment, without trying to fix it or control whatever is coming up, just, just witness, just be present with what is being revealed to you with what's coming alive. And then allow yourself to breathe and soften and offer some grace and compassion for whatever dialogue is being sparked in your body. And I hope that some of this conversation will help to bring a remembrance again of who God actually is, you know, outside of religion and the illusions of the world and all of these programs that we've been really conditioned into. So so like I said before, you know, I was in the realm of like universe, source, you know, all of these things. And again, it just felt like there was no anchor there for me. There was nothing I could really steadily hold on to. And then it felt like I was the one like in charge of doing all of the things to become this divine and enlightened being. And every other path of religion really is just creating a path to help you go towards the divine. So like climbing up the mountain to enlightenment or, um, you know, reaching towards, you know, whatever we think is, is like the highest state nirvana, you know, all of these things where to me, God heart was really revealed through Christ's character and, you know, Christianity. And I don't consider myself like mainstream Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus. I am a follower of the way, but the way is to me, love, harmony, and truth. Whereas, you know, the way of religion is very bound to legalism and law and condemnation and judgment. I'm not about that. So again, coming into relationship with God takes a lot of unraveling of that 
religious programming that we've all been impacted by to really remember the divine relationship that we are designed to be in with God. And really, you know, Jesus wasn't the, the divine Jesus, you know, um, there wasn't a path to the divine Jesus was the divine coming down to humanity. And I really do feel, and I do believe that, you know, Christ was the son of God. And, you know, I, I look at this lens through the triune, the Trinity, and I'll go deeper into that in another episode, but whether you believe Jesus is the son of God or not, is not my, my business and not what I'm here to convince you of. Ultimately, I'm just sharing how I've gotten to know God. And that is through understanding Christ and really looking at the journey of Jesus and really understanding Christ's heart and and character and who he was, what he was devoted to, his mission here on earth to remember who God is, which ultimately is love, right? This agape, unconditional, boundless love. And we are all here worthy of that love because you are the beloved and we are designed to be in this beautiful divine union with God, with Christ and with the spirit of the living God within us, the Holy Spirit. And that is, is the gift. That's, that's how we connect. And that was part of, you know, what, Christ, his journey was on earth was to help, you know, resurrect and gift us the restoration of that spirit within so that we could be in this beautiful communion with God and not have God be this, again, thing that's outside of us, who's just this tyrant, you know, looking down upon us, but really this God that yearns to be face to face, heart to heart, breath to breath, full body communion with us and to hold us in this boundless, beautiful love. And it's really us remembering that we are worthy of that and that we come from this sacred womb of God and we get to really, you know, divorce and dismantle all of these programs on earth. And to me, you know, following Christ and really being in relationship with God is, is the greatest liberation that you can ever ever, you know, arrive into here. Um, and I do believe, you know, as your heart gets closer to God and comes into connection with God, you know, your, your DNA is, is being renewed and we are resurrecting a new humanity, which is, you know, bringing the kingdom back, back here, the design that God always wanted for us, which was beauty and love and grace and compassion and community and justice and wholeness, you know, back to earth. We are designed for that. We've just been conditioned into a world of sin that has very much done everything in its power to, to have us forget that and forget who we are and where we come from. And for me, that path was restored through relationship with God and through Christ. So again, take that or leave that. I'm just sharing with you my own journey. So, so first things first, God is a relationship, not a religion. So to me, really to be a Christian means that you are bound to the spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of love, of harmony, of justice, of, of truth, of beauty, of just this, this incredible essence of an immeasurable frequency of love that beats in your heart. Whereas, you know, the spirit of religion is very much again, bound to that law, that legalism, that indoctrination, that condemnation, the judgment, you know, all of these these things that have really been constructed by, by empire, you know, church itself is, is an empire and we'll go deeper into that later, but, you know, empire's duty has always been to disconnect us from divine relationship with God. So that's why it is the greatest enemy of God. And it's the empire that is still ruling today and different sectors here to disconnect us from this beautiful, holy truth of love. So, so God is a relationship, not a religion. So we have to start looking at God outside of, of religion. And again, this takes time. This takes compassion. This takes grace. This is a lot of the work that I do with women is really dissolving all of the religious programs that have consciously or subconsciously been embedded into your system. And Um, so that you're then able to restore relationship. And again, 
God is a relational being. So it takes time and it takes trust and it takes safety to arrive back into, you know, closeness with God's heart. And I always say God is a faithful God, not a forceful God. You know, God is not going to force his will upon you. Um, God gifted us free will on earth, which is why we live in the world that we live in today. And there's essentially two paths that you can take here. There is, you know, the path of, you know, Hesiton, Lucifer, you know, the world, um, sin, and then there is the path of, of love and God and remembrance and harmony and truth and relationship. And um, it's, it's tricky because the enemy does everything in its power to disconnect us or have us question God. And again, this goes right back to the Garden of Eden, you know, the story of Eve. She was deceived because the serpent, you know, Hesitan Lucifer was having her question God's character having her question who God actually is. This is like the greatest play in the book, right? This is where the original fracture of us and God began and our separation from our beloved identity all stemmed from. So, you know, and this still exists today, right? We're going to question all the time. My path led me away from God for, for many years, although I always was walking in love, I wasn't necessarily um, connecting that to God or to Christ. So it's just very different for me today. And, and you know, um, in First John, you know, it says God is love. And, and if we look at Christ and look at his journey, we recognize, you know, that is what Christ was doing in his mission. And I, I find Jesus so incredible because, um, he really never fit into a box and he would have never been in present day, you know, conservative or liberal, you know, anti-vax, pro-vax, you know, this religion or that religion, you know, Jesus was showing the way, not religion and religious peoples and those in power hated Jesus, but the sinners loved him. And to me, that speaks oceans to Jesus's character, right? He was loved by by the broken, by the lost, by the weak, by the handicapped, by the harmed. Those were his followers. <laughs> and, and this is why, you know, when we arrive back into communion with God and remember who God is, especially through understanding his character through Christ, we, you remember that there is this unwavering essence of love that is showing us, you know, who God actually is. Um, so, so I always say God meets us in our dark darkness. He bent, bends down to us in our challenges and he so yearns to be close to, um, to your heart. And even, you know, in, in scripture, there's three types of love discussed in scripture. There is, you know, filial love, which is brotherly love, right? More friendship, kinship love. There's eros, which is romantic love. And there's then agape, which is the unconditional other centered, boundless love, right? In this real, um, love that is focused on the other, right? Not, not just the me. And this is where, where we're going in society. We're really shifting from this very, like, me, me, me energy, whether it's conscious or subconscious back into this we, which brings us back into harmony, which brings us away from this self-centered or self-authoring, you know, your life to this other centered and really co-authoring and co-creating your life with God. And when you choose that, you know, life becomes so much easier and there is so much more peace. And I can really speak to that from my own um, experience. It's not like I'm holding the weight of the world anymore. My anchor is, is with God and my faith is, is that anchor. And that's what I lean into. And that's what carries me through every day with grace and compassion and courage and bravery um, to walk this path. Um, so so because God is a personal being, it requires relationship. And for me, that relationship is cultivated through prayer. And to me, prayer is simply conversation with God. It's expressing your graciousness and gratitude for the blessings in your life. It's sharing with God, your worries, your doubts, your fears, your insecurities, you know, bringing those 
and letting those things be, you know, handed over into his palms and, and it's sharing, you know, your heart fully. And it's, it's opening you into deeper space of, of vulnerability and being seen, which takes time, right? In, in any relationship, you're not fully exposing yourself the first time you meet someone. So this is a slow and sacred process that gets to be very organic and unique to you. And I will go deeper into how I personally pray and kind of the structure of prayer that I, um, practice, um, which is very organic, but I'll go deeper into that in another video. But again, just think of it as a conversation. Think about getting to know anybody in your life that you love and think about how, you know, it felt safe for you to get to know that person, that being. And again, some of that will take deconstructing of past beliefs, ideas, and conditions that you've held on to. So, um, that's the journey I support women in. And, and a lot of people ask me, and this is something that I asked for a long time, you know, is God a man or a woman, right? Who, who is God? Like actual, you know, gender, shape, image, like who is God? And, and, you know, it's really fascinating because I believe ultimately God is beyond any shape or gender or defined image that we can like put into our, our mind again, like I said, I know God's heart through understanding Christ. So I do feel that Christ was the ambassador of God. And again, Christ was the most sacred, high divine masculine energy that's ever walked this earth. And for me as a feminine being, it's really beautiful to connect with Christ. Cause I feel, you know, in my relationship with Christ, I'm able to fully soften and surrender and receive and be open and be in this divine co-creative dance, um, with the creator, but God and the church obviously is very heavy on like the father, you know, God being masculine and all the things. And, and again, has created this very like patriarchal and hierarchical construct, which again is all from church and religion. This isn't from God, you know, Christ looking at his journey again, was, was aiming to break hierarchy. He valued men and women, slaves and free beings as equal. There was no separation. We are all, you know, one in this relational oneness with God, with Christ, with each other, with the earth. There is, there's no ultimate separation between the, that, that energy together. So, you know, again, Christ was trying to dismantle those, those hierarchies of control and, and essentially what became the patriarchy. Um, so, and I find it interesting because, you know, even through scripture, there is much evidence of, you know, God speaking of himself, you know, beingness as, as both mother and father, male and female. And I'll read a couple of scriptures that really, that really speak to this, um, in speaking, you know, or God speaking, you know, of himself. And I just don't have another word right now to replace there, but God speaking of God as, as the mother. So again, this is why I believe God goes beyond a gender here. So, you know, a couple of scriptures are, um, you know, this one is from Luke 13, 34, how many times I wanted, I wanted to put my arms around all your people, just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Right. So God speaking as, as the mother, right. Just as a hen like protects and, and holds and nurtures, you know, the chicks under her wings, that is what God is saying and speaking to himself. And one of the ones they love is from Genesis 127. Humankind was created as God's reflection in the divine image. God created them male and female. God made them. So, right. If we are in God's image, which he includes both male and female, God essentially carries those those two energies, those two essences. And I, I always feel, and I say this a lot, you know, God is creator. And I believe all of us, male, female, and the earth is creation, right? And we're designed to be in this co-creative relationship, creator and creation. And all of humanity here to me is, is the bride, is, you know, the feminine counterpart to God. But men 
are made in the image and likeness of God's um, more masculine, high masculine principal essence, right? The protector, the guardian, the provider, the direction, the clarity, the tangibility, the provision, um, the warrior energy. That is, you know, that is the image of, of men and God. And of course, men also carry the essence of, of their own, you know, feminine, the reflection of God's heart, the beingness in us as the feminine are that we are the reflection of God's heart. We are the beingness of God. We are the love, the grace, the devotion, the compassion, the nurturing, the wisdom, you know, and we carry that so beautifully as the feminine. And that's why, you know, again, male and female are equal, but different. And we are designed to complement each other. And we're designed to be in union with each other. This is how we really build the bridge to the kingdom. It's not fighting against each other and oppressing each other and trying to overpower each other. It's being in this beautiful co-creative dance with God, with each other, with the earth. And that is how we're creating this beautiful bridge of our liberation and restoring heaven on earth here. So, so, you know, and there's, there is, there's like so many passages. I have like 10 written down, um, of God, you know, speaking as, as a mother energy, you know, in Isaiah 66, 13 says, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, right? That's God speaking. Um, in Isaiah 49, 15, God says, can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you, you know, speaking that we come from God's womb. And again, God is this, you know, mother, you know, divine energy that infinitely loves us, that we have infinite belonging, right? Just like, um, and I know many of us have had, you know, parental trauma and, and maybe favorable or unfavorable, you know, upbringing experiences, but that energy of the mother is nutritive, is nurturing, is love, is compassionate, is also protective, is fierce, is strength. And, you know, God is speaking you know, to God's essence from that place, from that, that divine love of a mother. Um, and there's, there's a lot of scripture that, you know, brings us through in many passages. So, so again, for me, it's not either, or it's, it's just so much bigger than that. So we can't get attached to it being this, this thing. And God has to be the father, you know, and I, I personally relate to God as more of that masculine energy, especially as a feminine being, because that gives me an anchor to rest into, right? So again, the feminine is designed to be in devotion and flow and creativity. And, you know, just look at us, you know, biologically, the feminine is designed to be penetrated and the masculine is, is the penetrator. And again, there's a lot to unravel there. And there's a lot of trauma that can be attached to that. And again, this is why, many of us as women have like created all these walls and shells and shields around us so that we don't risk, you know, being penetrated. And this isn't just physically, this is also emotionally, spiritually, energetically, you know, in an unfavorable way due to past trauma, whether that has been in a relationship or through the church or through, through religion. And this is why, you know, we've seen the waves of, of feminism, which, you know, of course, I'm all about women's rights, but also a lot of the, the movement of the feminists is, is on the extreme end where, you know, women are just becoming like men. And that's not our design. We are designed to be complementary to each other. So there's a lot to go into with that, that I won't go into now, but ultimately God goes beyond a gender. And again, I connect with, with the Trinity, right? God, the father, the Holy spirit, right? The spirit of the living God within us and understanding that God is an eternal community of relational oneness through that, through that Trinity. And really, you know, we are here to be in an ecosystem of eternal love. And for me, that remembrance of love is really through relationship with God and restoration through Christ and remembering that you are a divine reflection of God's heart here. And you do have this just incredible purpose to co-create beauty and bring love where it hasn't gone before. And you get to do that with God. You don't have to do it alone. So, so 
this is why I'm passionate about restoring relationship and, and unraveling, you know, all the religious programming that, that tells you anything, you know, other than, other than this. So again, I hope that you received what you needed today. Let things integrate, let things land. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions, insights, reflections. I love hearing from you. And again, if you desire to go deeper in this path with restoring your femininity through relationship with God and remembrance of beloved identity, my one-on-one -on -one mentorship, um, is open and I'll, I'll link that down below. Um, and you can find me on Instagram. That's the easiest way to connect or through my email. Um, and I would love to collaborate and co-create and walk beside you in that space if you feel called. So until next time, more to come, um, receive, um, receive, 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 and just soften into this. And I will see you next time. Sending you love.